Hello and welcome back to the Legend of Zelda the Minish Cap. When we last left off, we were heading to the dungeon in this area, and so we continue on our way to the dungeon. Yeah, in this area, because uh, all statues are active, normally that's fine, but you want to deactivate the last statue, because it'll run into place and uh, it won't move again. It'll auto-deactivate, so you can't get past it. So you have to shrink and uh, basically deactivate it from there. But destroy these other three statues, don't turn them off, because if you destroy them, uh, I'm just saying, if you destroy them, that barricade over there disappears, and you can get the treasure, which is uh, kinstone and mysterious shells. No, rupees and mysterious shells. My mistake. I keep forgetting because there are tons of kinstones in this area in the uh, in the uh, dungeon, and I just found another one in the rock. Okay. <laughs> I keep forgetting how many kinstones I found in this area because at the end I think I had. Over 10 green kinstones, starting off with zero, and a good portion. More. Yeah, see all those kinstones? If you pause like a few seconds earlier and look at the kinstones, then yeah, you'll see how many I've collected in terms of green kinstones, starting out from zero. Because I had zero when I first entered the swamp, now I have, I think, about seven as of this point. But by the time I'm done, I have over 10 easily. Alright, but now that we're here, we're just about up to the uh, dungeon entrance, if I'm correct. Yeah, it's just up these stairs. Yep. And here's the, here's the dungeon. It's called... Forest of Wind. Fortress of Winds. Sorry. Almost said forest. Actually, before we head to the center room, go to the rooms on the side first. Because each of them contains keys and other items and such. Like here, uh... We can't get through these blocks and I checked every single one of them. You can't push them aside. I actually don't get into that room until near the end of the dungeon, actually. But basically, uh, go to the rooms on the sides first, because there are keys you need to find first that are in each room. Ow. Yeah, be careful of those energy orbs, or whatever they're called. Because they'll just go along the wall and hit you while you're pulling a switch. Very annoying. I thought it wouldn't hit me, but I was wrong, and I tried to pull this one before it gets to me, but I mess up. Yeah, this one opens the door. Now, you're seeing all these uh, different walls all over the place, and they look different from the normal walls. That's because they could be dug out, but the problem is we don't have anything to dig them out with. We will get something to dig them out with by the time we're through with this dungeon. And it'll lead to us getting a lot of kin stones and everything. Yo, yeah, there are a lot of flying skulls in this dungeon too, so be careful of those. Also, you don't want to fall down the hole, so be careful of that. Otherwise, I think you'll have to fight the statues again.
Yeah, there's nowhere to go. I didn't check the left side of the room before this, so... Yeah, I just realized I did have to go in the shaft roll. I thought I didn't have to use it just yet, but I was wrong. Because I didn't check the whole other room first. We have that room to the right we can't access yet. I think that's where the boss key is. Or it's where the boss room is. Can't remember. One or the other. Now that we've activated that uh, statue, though, we can activate it, get it out of the way, and uh, we can pull the switch, which will uh, drop the key down to the first floor through the hole. After that, we have to do this same process again in the other area to the left side. Because we've done the right side, but there's another key we can get in a similar way on the left side of the dungeon. What I forget to do here is become Minish and drop down the hole, because you can drop down the hole to the first floor as a Minish, and there'll be no difference. And that's how you get the hard piece of the moon to the right. I just didn't figure out to do that until near the end of the dungeon when I was just about the boss door and I went. Then I realized I hadn't solved that area and I decided to go back and do that real quick. But yeah, here's the left side of the dungeon. Over here we'll basically get another key. Also, be careful of these uh, Stalfos. They'll try and jump and basically drop right on top of you. It's annoying. Personally, I like the Stalfos that just jump back and throw bones at you. Those aren't as annoying. Anyways. Now I gotta just uh, open the door with an arrow. There we go. Careful of light lights in this room. There are two of them, if I'm correct. The one that's green, and there's a red one at the end of this hallway. Again, I check each ruby with my sword in this area, because they're way too obvious. Because they didn't do this in Ocarina. The like lights were just there. You could see them, and you could hear them. These ones, they're hiding as rubies, so it's very odd. In this room, you have to go across the platforms, and while you're going across the platforms, you have to shoot both targets within a certain amount of time, so you can open the door. See? Otherwise, the, other, the eyes will open up again. So do it quickly, otherwise the door will close. The other eye will open, and you won't be able to open the door, and you'll have to try again. Alright, in this room, it's not too hard. Just uh, split yourself into two and uh, press the switch, then defeat the two statues. I think you get the compass in this room if you do that. Can't remember, it's either the compass or the map. Right, and we get... Yeah, it's the compass. Okay. Now there's the other door to our right, and that should have the key in it. And for some reason I go on that platform. I can't remember why I did that. Alright, in these skulls up there, there's a good pocket of pocket change worth of rupees. Like, you'll find a blue one and a green one, usually. I'm just saying, more rupees doesn't hurt in this game. Everything's usually in the hundreds in, in terms of cost. Or above 50. So, uh, don't be afraid to push the stone all the way, because I was trying to think if there's anything else I could do with the stone, besides pushing it all the way to the other side. But you're supposed to do that because you're supposed to push it up as well. 
I was just hesitant because um, I wasn't sure if that's what I was supposed to do because I didn't want to have to redo the main course. Alright, and there's the second key dropping down to the first floor. So yeah, all we have to do is drop down. We don't have to go through the floors again, which is which I'm which makes me actually really happy with this dungeon. You don't have to spend all waste a lot of time just going up and down stairs. You just drop right down to the first floor again. It's really helpful. Now we can start exploring the rest of this dungeon in the uh, center area. Oh, and be careful of more of those Stalfos with the uh, the jump and try to hit you from the from above. Oh, also you get the map in this room. Right. We need the uh, digging tool. I can't remember what it's called. Again, I'll call it by its proper name once I uh, see it. Which is in this dungeon, I know that. We don't have that much treasure left in this dungeon. Oh, it doesn't show the areas that you can dig in, though. It's very strange. It doesn't show you any of the areas you can dig in, though, which I find odd. I decided to check the uh, room to the south again because I don't. I didn't know that upstairs was blocked off. Blocked off and you had to dig through it. But, uh, yeah. Now that that's done, we'll explore the uh, top ones and unlock the doors. Yeah, just hold the lever and the bridge will appear, but then run across quickly, otherwise uh, the bridge will disappear. You don't need the Pegasus boots, you just need to use the uh, rolling feature that Link has. Also, of course, careful of these um, floor masters, I'm guessing, or are they wall masters? No, they're floor masters, because the other ones, the, um, the ceiling masters, or whatever they're called, uh, drop down from above. These ones just collide on the floor. Oh, look at that. Green Kinstone piece. And a red ruby. Again, I didn't figure out what this uh, shrinking pad was, the portal was for until later. But once I did, I redid this area of the dungeon. But for now, you're gonna see me just sort of get another key and then sort of get lost for a little bit. And again, be careful of flying skulls. Drop in the hole and then wait for those things to pass, then just go. As you can see, those statues can cover two of the buns, but we need us to split ourselves up in order for us to cover the other two. I really didn't mess up, so I pushed the statue a little further along and just uh, sort of um, push them in the right area. I go a little more out of the way than I should with this puzzle, but I was just confused on it because I didn't understand why you need to become Minish to do this puzzle until I uh, got to the other side of the locked door. Yeah, see, that's me going back up there checking the walls again in my confusion. 